A Russian court has found WNBA star Brittany Griner guilty on drug possession charges. The judge has ordered her to serve nine years in prison. Griner, who pleaded guilty, said she made an honest mistake bringing cannabis oil on a flight to Moscow. Ahead of the verdict, Griner told reporters she never intended to cause any harm. I understand everything that's being said against me, the charges that are against me, and that is why I pled guilty. But I had no intent to break any Russian laws. I want to apologize to my teammates, my club, Gemka, the fans, and the city of ECAT for my mistake that I made and the embarrassment that I brought onto them. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayab joins us now from London. And so, MTS, was this the verdict that we all expected? Well, uh, very good to talk to you, uh, Deborah. The verdicts, well, yes, uh, we were expecting a conviction. We have to remember that uh, Brittany Griner did admit guilt, uh, so we were expecting her to co be convicted. But the sentencing, the sentencing of nine years in a Russian penal colony, uh, I think this is obviously devastating for her, for her legal defense, her friends and family, but it's also uh, something of a shock to a degree. And I want to stress the word to a degree. And we have to remember the defense's entire strategy uh, was, uh, and what we heard in her clip, which was her intent was not to bring illegal narcotics into Russia. It was an honest mistake. It was a very small amount. We understand it was only around a gram or so of this oil, which was prescribed to her by a doctor in Arizona, uh, legal uh, and that uh, she had just recovered from COVID. She was very exhausted. She uh, had a lot of things in her bag. Uh, and that's why it ended up in her possession. But it would appear that this judge uh, did not take any of that uh, into account. And as we've been saying, she's now been sentenced to nine years in a Russian penal colony and has been fined a million rubles, which is around 16,000 U.S. dollars. You are mentioning this Russian penal colony. Give us an idea of what that's like. What do we know about those? It sounds chilling uh, because it is chilling. Um, where specifically Brittany Griner will go, we do not know. Uh, but what we do know is that those who are uh, sentenced to penal colonies uh, are in for a pretty tough time. Um, again, we can't say exactly where Brittany Griner will go. We can't uh, say exactly the kind of conditions in this specific penal colony that she'll face. Uh, but we understand and we know because uh, it's well documented that Russian prisons are pretty terrible places mm. to be. The conditions are pretty tough. Uh, and she's already been in prison for a very long time, 168 days, 24 weeks. Uh, and now she's facing nine years in prison. Um, this, of course, uh, is something that uh, nobody wanted, certainly not Brittany Griner. Uh, we understand that as she was leaving the court, uh, she shouted out, quote here, and I'm quoting here, that I love my family. Uh, mm. And this has really been the message that Brittany Griner has had throughout. Uh, every time she appeared in court, she had photos stuck to her binder. Uh, and uh, more often than not, it was a photo of her wife. It was a photo of her family. But this time, she walked in with a photo, photo of her team in Russia, a team mm. that she's played, for, played with for seven years, uh, a team who she apologized to uh, before her sentencing to. Uh, we have to remember that Brittany Griner has, again, been playing in Russia for seven years. Uh, it's part of a broader issue of WNBA players having to supplement their incomes mm. by playing abroad, uh, which we can discuss at a later date. But more importantly, Brittany Griner said that she loved her team and loved playing there uh, and hoped that all of that uh, would lead to some sort of leniency from this judge, and she was not given any leniency whatsoever. The President of the United States released a statement that says, in part, quote, Russia is wrongfully detaining Brittany. It's unacceptable, and I call on Russia to release her immediately so she can be with her wife, loved ones, friends, and teammates. Uh, you know, Imtaz, last week the administration offered a prisoner swap with Russia to bring Griner home. What is the status of that? And more so, like, what's the reality of that actually happening? It's a very good question, David. And 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. In an extraordinary development, we heard from the Secretary of State himself, Antony Blinken, announcing that Russia had been offered a prisoner swap deal. Uh, and we'll get into the details of the actual swap itself, but that in itself was pretty astonishing. And Antony Blinken was very clear about why they announced it. They said that they wanted to put it out in the open uh, so that Russia had no way of avoiding what was being offered. So what was being offered? The offer was that Brittany Griner and another American, a man by the name of Paul Whelan, who was also being held in a Russian prison, that he would be swapped uh, by a man of the name of Victor Boot. And Mr. Boot is essentially considered one of the most notorious weapons dealers uh, to come out of Russia. He's currently serving a 25-year prison sentence in the U.S., but it doesn't look like that prisoner swap is going to happen anytime soon. David, Deborah. Well, you know, MTS, um, those pictures that Brittany will be holding you know, of her, her wife, Sherelle, it, that, you know, they really haven't spoken. I remember mm. Sherelle was talking to Gail King and saying they have not spoken. And so I can only imagine seeing her face today, what that must be like for her family. Very sad for all of them. Absolutely. MTS Tayeb, thank you very much from London. Thank you. William Pomeranz joins us now. He's the director of the Keenan Institute at the Wilson Center, and he's an expert on Russian law. William, are you at all surprised by the verdict and the sentence? No, I didn't. I, I expected that it would be a very severe sentence. I did not anticipate that the judge would be lenient. And all those things have now turned into reality. Yeah, leniency. It didn't seem like that was going to be on the table. You know, Greiner has apologized for bringing marijuana into Russia, calling it an honest mistake. The court didn't really seem to care about that. I mean, there was no leniency. So how in line with a typical drug case is her verdict in sentencing? I think this is fairly typical for a drug case in the Russian Federation. Uh, they have severe penalties for uh, narcotics, and that has been convinced, uh, con confirmed in this case as well. So I don't think that this was at all a outlier in the Russian judicial system. I think this was an expected verdict and that uh, it will be uh, a very severe penalty for Brittany. And as the earlier commentators asked, uh, a lot will depend on where she, ha where she goes uh, in terms of what her, what her sentence really means. Um, I anticipate that she will, be, she, she will be imprisoned in some place outside of Moscow uh, and most likely a difficult place to get to which means that she will have difficulties uh, meeting her teammates, her friends, uh, and her loved ones in Russia. It will be a very lonely sentence, unfortunately, for Brittany Griner. Do you think the sentencing has to do with the potential leverage that Russia feels they have over the U.S. by holding Griner? I don't think that that issue really came into account in the sentence. But it is true, you know, Biden has made now major statements about our, the U.S. desire to return Brittany Griner and Paul Wheelan to the United States. Uh, but these are tricky diplomatic negotiations, and they will take some time. And I think others have said before that because the United States has put so much attention on this case, Russia is really in the driver's seat as to how long Brittany stays in the Russian Federation. And I also wonder what an appeal might look like as well. Do you have any idea hmm. what could happen there? Is that even an option? Uh, th th there will be an appeal. Um, and the defense counsel said that they intend to appeal the uh, verdict. Uh, but uh, judges notoriously in Russia are not anxious to go uh, out on a limb and overturn a conviction. Well, you, uh, uh, it's not it's it's not in in their makeup. I wonder what and, you. I wonder what you think ahead. about this. In in circumstances where other people get arrested in other countries, there all there's not always a connection, right, to mm -hmm. the country like Brittany has to the basketball team in years Russia. She's been playing? Right. So, do you think in any way that that sort of makes for a unique circumstance where within the country of Russia, her team, the coaches, the people who are a part of that team could be a part of this coalition to build pressure that might, and I say might loosely, 
sway on Putin? Building coalitions in Russia, in any case, uh, political and criminal, is very, very difficult. Yeah. And I doubt sincerely that Vladimir Putin wants to weigh in on these negotiations and would be sympathetic to a coalition uh, demanding the release or a different penalty for Brittany Griner. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that we've learned over the last six months and, and longer that Putin is not really listening to public opinion. Indeed, he's cracking down on the ability uh, to voice alternative viewpoints in the Russian Federation. We appreciate your insight. William Pomerantz, thank you.